93% of the tested bottled waters contain microplastics. Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, how many times have I shouted from the top of my lungs, make sure you get a water filter. No matter what kind, no matter where you get it, make sure that you get a water filter that you can put in your home that is a reverse osmosis water filtration system. Why? Because this is everywhere, even in bottled water, it's been found. So let's get into this real quick. I got an awful lot of news, ladies and gentlemen, so I'll probably be putting out at least two videos today because it's just too much news to cover in one. So let's get started. Microplastics are everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. And for those of you that maybe have looked into this before, plastics have what are called forever chemicals. But now they're finding it, or let me correct myself, they've actually been finding this in bottled water. So for those of you that think that you're drinking nice, clean water when you buy a bottle of water at wherever you buy it, maybe not, ladies and gentlemen. All right, again, I'm gonna say this one more time. I don't care where you buy it. Yes, I have links in the description of the video for Simpure and for an American-made, 100% American-made reverse osmosis systems. Take a look at them and pick one. I don't care which one you get, ladies and gentlemen, but get an RO system installed in your home and stop buying bottled water for goodness sakes because it's just a pure waste of money. And let me go ahead and go on my little rant here for a minute. You know, if you get an RO system, depending on how much you pay for one, but let's take, let's say you get one that's 120, 150 bucks. How many bottles of water can you buy for 150 bucks? But that RO system, if you get well, one of these guys, right? If you get one of these bottles, stainless steel on the inside, and then you fill that bottle up every time that you're leaving your house with that RO system water, this right here is like a 32 ounce container. So that's going to be about two bucks, three bucks at the gas station if you're buying water. Why not do that? Get an RO system for 120, 150 bucks, whatever it may be. After 50 of these bottles that you fill up with that system, you've already made your money back had you purchased the bottles at the gas station. But the difference is, is that you're going to get years of use out of that RO system. It's a no brainer. And you're going to get water that you know is clean instead of having to guess. The potential effect of microplastics on major organs, including the brain, what science says. I will be leaving the link to everything that I go over on this video so that you can revisit it. I just wanted to go ahead and pick out a few things that I think are very important for everyone to know, but I would say that you should come back and revisit this article. That delicious slice of pizza, ladies and gentlemen, that you're eating may come with invisible side of plastic. Why? Because it's in the water, ladies and gentlemen. We just can't see it. Tiny plastic fragments that are smaller than a grain of rice are making their way into our food supply, our water, and subsequently into our bodies. You're likely ingesting microplastics every day, study warns. Large plastics such as shopping bags and water bottles degrade into microplastics over time. Elements such as sunlight and water break down plastics that evade waste management. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what can we do about this? Yes, one of the things that we can do about this is to not pollute our environment. But is that going to stop? No, it's not going to stop. You know why? Because even though in some states here in the United States, let's say they have outlawed plastic straws, that's great. We're no longer throwing 15 million plastic straws into the, into the ocean a day, whatever it is, right? I just made up that number. But other countries like India are still throwing all of their plastics into the ocean at an even greater rate than what they were before we stopped throwing ours into the ocean. Other countries like China, they don't care what they put into the ocean, ladies and gentlemen. So it doesn't matter how much we restrict it here in our country, we're still gonna be getting these pollutants in our water and in our food. So what can you do to fix that? In this case, make sure that you're drinking clean water. And that's gonna take care of a lot of the other issues because if you're drinking clean water because you're making clean water, then the food that you're making at home with that clean water, it's not gonna have microplastics in it. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This study from 2018, 
all right, shows that 93% of the tested bottled waters contain microplastics. You can't even trust the bottled water, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, because many people consume bottled water daily, microplastics exposure is far reaching, meaning that all of you out there who are buying bottled water on a regular basis thinking, hey, this water is clean. Well, you've been drinking microplastics, unfortunately. They are everywhere, including in the snow at the top of Mount Everest. In fact, children born today are exposed to microplastics in utero. A small study of six human placentas found microplastics in all the tissues studied. All right, enough about the microplastics, ladies and gentlemen. Why U.S. businesses can't wait to get out of China. Now, if you read into this article, you'll understand where it is that I'm coming from. But here it says that after fueling China's growth for decades, which we have, American businesses are now pulling out. And why is that? Well, as its political and business landscape shifts. Meaning what? As its political and business landscape shift. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's because China has never really been too worried about making a profit. Why? Because what do they worry about the most? What does China worry about more than profit? Well, that's control over the people. And that's just evident. It says here, it's not that Xi Jinping and the CCP leadership hate economic growth. It's just not a priority. AP, where are you getting that? Well, let me read this little three-liner and then I'll tell you exactly what. The priority is control over society, including the economy. So whenever there's a trade-off between economic control and growth, they choose control, he said. What does this remind you of, ladies and gentlemen? This is coming from a communist nation, China, and they're saying pretty much, hey, we would rather have control over the people over economic growth anytime. And it's true, they would. What does that remind you of? It reminds me of one thing, and that's ESG. ESG investing refers to a set of standards for a company's behavior used by socially conscious investors to screen potential investments. Pretty much what are they telling you? ESG stands for a rating of how a company adheres to their rulers, i.e. the UN. All right. That's what it says, believe it or not. Environmental criteria consider how a company safeguards the environment. It sounds really good, ladies and gentlemen, but what do you have to give up in order for this fantasy to come to be? Well, you're going to have to give up an awful lot, especially if you live in a first world country like the U.S., the EU, you know, countries, etc., uh, let's see, including corporate policies addressing climate change, something that, in my opinion, is a hoax, uh, social criteria examining how it manages relationships with employees, suppliers, customers, and the communities where it operates, governance deals with a company's leadership, executive pay, audits, internal controls, and shareholder rights. And the thing is this, is that if a company on its own wanted to do all of this stuff, that's great. Go ahead. Go for it. But what they're doing is, is they're doing it under the guise of the UN's Sustainable Development Goals that does not reach to only one country or one company, but to the entire world, ladies and gentlemen. But there's a lot of other countries that are like, we're not going to be playing this game. Let's just go along to get along, but we're not playing this game. Check this out. UK is giving up on solar power. Prime Minister Sunak's policy changes, including delays in transitioning to electric vehicles and restrictions on solar energy, have raised concerns about the UK's commitment to climate action. And here they say that their government in the UK has accu been accused of backtracking on several of its climate pledges over the last few months, and the solar energy industry is the latest to be affected. The Prime Minister is following in his predecessor's footsteps by imposing restrictions on new solar energy developments in the UK, which could lead the country to rely on foreign energy imports to meet its growing demand for renewable energy and ensure its energy security. If this Green New Deal thing is this green movement thing was so successful after more than a decade of stripping the people from their money so that they can invest it in this stuff ladies and gentlemen after more than a decade of stripping their people from their wealth and making your cost of living go up by as much as it has in the last 10 years or so then why in the world are they having to revert to actual fossil fuels in order to power their their countries why ladies and gentlemen because this green stuff doesn't work 
beautiful. Solar panels are beautiful. They're a great complement. Solar generators are beautiful. A great complement to a gas generator. You've heard me say it a thousand times. If you don't have a gas generator, get a gas generator first before you get a solar generator. All right, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a great complement to a gas generator. Just like solar panels and stuff like that are a great complement to the grid, but not as a standalone, you know, energy source. And while your country is giving up all fossil fuels like coal, like natural gas, oil, diesel, etc., China is building coal plants at the rate I think it's about two plants per week in 2022. So while everyone else is giving up reliable energy, China is saying, hey, we're just going to continue to build this. And guess what? We'll probably get coal on the cheap. Why? Because nobody else wants to use it. This, ladies and gentlemen, disgusts me because I've seen so many videos where the elderly were talking in their homes during the winter and you can see their breath from their mouth because their temperature inside their home was so low because they couldn't afford to eat their home. It's either heat your home or eat. But here we have other countries. China is almost 20% of the world population. So anything that you're doing in your country, let's say the U.S. or the U.K., anything that we're doing to not pollute with CO2, China's already going ahead and erase that progress. China permitted more coal power plants last year than any time in the last seven years, according to a new report released this week. It's the equivalent of about two new coal power plants per week. So go ahead. Keep cheering for that climate change, green energy stuff. You're going to get it, all right? You're going to get less energy while China's getting more energy. You're going to pay more for your energy while China's paying less. And guess what? In the end, nothing will have changed except for how poor you are and how decrepit your standard of living now is. India will continue to build more coal-fired power capacity to feed its booming energy demand even as it expands its renewable generation. China, about 20% or so of the, of the human race, really? India, about 20% or so. That's about 40% that are pretty much erasing any advancements that other countries have made in, in the attempt to pollute less carbon dioxide, right? Global warming to pollute less. Do you think that maybe you've been hoodwinked into thinking that this green energy stuff is really going to work? In the end again, ladies and gentlemen, you're just going to be a lot poorer, ladies and gentlemen, a lot poorer, and you're going to have a standard of living that is much less than what it was three, four, five years ago. And let me go ahead and finish it off with this one. German coal plants may have to remain on standby longer than planned. So they have a whole bunch of coal plants that they've mothballed pretty much. They've wrapped them up and says, we're not going to use these anymore. And hopefully we'll just be able to dismantle them and turn them into probably solar plant fields or whatever, right? Now they're finding out that, hey, we probably are going to need these guys. So don't tear them apart just yet. Why? Because solar and wind... It's not going to power the world. And the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, they've known this all along. You've been taken for a ride and you've been robbed of your wealth. But this is something that's been planned for a very long time. Having said that, I'm going to try to get another video out today because there's still a whole bunch. Let me see about five or six other things that I need to talk about. But I don't want to go ahead and make this video a thousand hours long. So thank you very much for joining in today. I hope that you're having a good week so far. All right. So God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.